So before we get into this episode, we just wanted to take a second to thank our sponsors, Boss Play. They are an uh, escape Ooh. room in Oceanside, California, and they yes. they have two different escape rooms. Taylor, do you know what they are? They have the Prohibition Era escape room and the uh, Chocolate Factory styled escape room. Bad news. They ran out of blimps. Again? Yeah, they started using the wrong type of gas, I guess. And it's not Boss Place's fault. It's the company that they're renting them from. And well, Quick question. What kind of gas do blimps use? Uh, well, normally, they use yes. helium. Okay. But they started and using they propane. they helium? They s- Ooh. Thankfully, it didn't now, explode. But. We would have had a Hindenburg on our hands. Yeah. So. It just never got off the ground. Oh. There it is. That's it, folks. <laughs> I don't know. We'll wrap it up now. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. I feel, I feel like you were making a pun. I was not making a pun. I'm still not sure what pun the, was made. The, the blimps could not get off the ground. Yeah. Yes. Oh, were you being literal? <laughs> yes. Oh, I, <laughs> I thought it was like a figure speech. Like, oh, they just weren't able to take off. They never took off like they thought. <laughs> they weren't. They, they weren't. They able, weren't able to get it up and running. They weren't able to get off the ground. <laughs> they weren't able to get it in the sky. Is that better? That's better. That's literally what I was saying. They were not able to get the blimps physically off the ground to have any kind of travel. Yes, got it. But I believe what they're doing now. They took a book, yes. or they took a page out of El Chapo's book, and now they're doing oh, tunnels, underground tunnels, underground tunnels. Unfortunately, you yeah. can't use that system to get out of the escape rooms. You have to go through the, the normal way, solving puzzles and all that. But to get to the escape room, you have to take a series of tunnels. You have to figure out how to get into the escape room. Yeah. Just you, to get out of the escape room. You escape life into the escape room to escape the escape room back to life. That is so deep. Taylor and Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Taylor. Yes. Since the theme song just played. Yes. And you always recognize it. I wanted to talk to you about something very serious. Let's hear it. 12 Strong is not a very good movie. No. No. Not very good. Well, hmm. it's, it's one of those things. I compare it to like when crystal is looking for something and then she asks me to go look for it like or even if she doesn't ask me to look for it i know that i also have to go look in the exact same places that she looked yeah because she's not a good looker right or a good finder (laughs) (laughs) whoops cancel it cancel it the podcast is off the whole thing is done so is your marriage Eh, she don't listen (laughs) No, basically what I'm saying is you can tell me all about a movie, whether you like it or not, Yeah. but that does nothing for me. I'm just going to have to see it for myself to be a good judge because we differ basically way too much. Yeah. No. We're not even on the same scale, <laughs> typically. So the story, it's a true story based about, based about, based on the first based soldiers horses. into Afghanistan. They team yes. up with a militia in Afghanistan and ride horses um, to help them. That's how they get around and they fight off ISIS. Tanks and stuff? Tanks and stuff. Um, okay. The problem, it's not so much with the story or the writing or the acting. I, The editing really bothered me. Oh, here we go. And Steven Spielberg over here has another problem with editing. <laughs> and you watch it and they cut every clip is uh, meant to be cohesive. So like you see a person shoot a rocket. The next scene is a rocket exploding somewhere, right? Like that's a pretty basic concept. Okay. But none of it feels cohesive. Like even though they do that, it's very clear yeah. that they just like found a clip. It's like, oh, this will be a good to go 
you know, behind this explosion. Oh, and like, yeah. it just feels so disjointed and not, it doesn't feel like it's going in a, a, a like in order. Like things just feel all over the place. Right. And uh, who is the director? Nikolai Fugzig? Fugzig? Fugglesig. Fugglesig. Fugly sick. <laughs> um and the other issue was Chris Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth Kentucky accent was very off putting. Oh really? Is it is it weird? Uh it's not bad. He didn't do a terrible job. It's just very strange to yeah. like it's like uh oh, something is not right here. Something is off. Um hmm. how was Michael Pena? He was fine. They're all fine. They, it, it's really, it's really kind of just a boring movie. Yeah. Um, it's like over two hours long, I believe. At least, Jeez. I got in the theater. The movie started at eight thirty. They played, yeah. So it was two hours ten minutes long. And that's, uh, that's I, lengthy. I checked my watch twice watching this movie. Yeah, I I typically find myself checking the time at about, well, I usually do. I I always find myself at about an hour and a half, just because I'm curious, not because it's I think it's slow, but then usually about that two hour mark, if the movie's not wrapping up around that time, I'm gonna get a little bit bored. Yeah, it's, most movies don't belong over two hours. Yeah, this one did not. This one. Every battle felt very similar. Everything, yeah. everything just felt so. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, and then they had an enemy, the villain of the story, who yes. was a comic book villain. Is like the best way I could describe him. He's so, so like evil. over the top. Yeah, no. he's so evil that yeah. it's. Who is the villain? I don't know. Or is that is it is it Bin Laden? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't remember the guy's name. Um, Saddam Hussein. But he, I know there are evil people in the world. I get that. Right. But in the movie, he is just so so evil, and it's really hard to even just buy into the story because he's so like cartoonishly evil. Hmm. So like Doctor Evil. Yes, but not quite as comedic. Just more, more earnest, <laughs> but equally as evil. Interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I. Uh, it's it's not great. It's not a good war movie. I think. I'll be honest. I've never heard someone say that the evil character was too evil. Well, I don't know that I've heard that. You should watch it and let me know what you think. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's hard to explain without you having seen it. So you think his evilness is unrealistic? Not not quite unrealistic, but he is so one note in the movie that mm-hmm. it's not interesting at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the stuff that he does doesn't seem like Im- Im- impossible and like that stuff actually happens. And this yeah. guy could have done that, but he had no layers to him. To where he was just a consistent evil the whole time, yeah. and it was just like oh, this is this you like they're just it, it felt very like a propaganda piece almost like the movie was like this guy's evil these people are evil right. and I get it it's ISIS like yeah I, I'm not I'm not trying to defend ISIS or say that they're they're good <laughs> or that i oh boy <laughs> oh no um be careful be careful <laughs> but it's yeah, just boy. as a movie it, it's really hard for it to be compelling when it, it's so yeah so single note like that do you know what i mean like it's di- like distracting yeah yeah like every time he came on it was like oh well he's just gonna do something evil i got it yeah. he also was always in all black like Darth Vader almost. Like Well, you have to be if you're evil. Yeah. That was it just felt very tropey. I don't know. Did he have a cape? Uh he had robes. Not really a cape. Yep. Those are modern day capes. Yeah. 
<laughs> did he have like a an animal that he held in his arms and he petted? Did he have? Did he do the classic like chair turn around? Um, no. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's it it's fine. It's one I wouldn't say don't ever see it, but it's not one that I would recommend to see. Like it's not one that's like amazing right. and there's there's one scene where he's using his binoculars with he's talking to the uh militia leader and he's the chris hemsworth looking in the binoculars he's like i don't see anyone like what what's going on and the militia leader's like oh look over past those trees and then it zooms in the camera angle takes over the binoculars mm-hmm. and all you see are like tanks and people running around and cars driving around and it's like <laughs> You could see that without binoculars. Like, you would know exactly where it is. There's no reason why that, like, and that was kind of the issue with the editing. Like, it was what they were saying wasn't bad, but what they're showing you right afterwards makes no sense. It didn't match up. Yeah. Huh. So, Interesting. Yeah. Well, this I, has been another episode of Alan Hates Movies. <laughs> Sorry, Alan Hates All Movies. I don't hate All Movies. Pitch Perfect and Pitch Perfect 2. Pitch Perfect 1 and 2 are pretty good. That is so boggling. See, this is why I can't trust anything you ever say. Because you hate almost everything. And then there's a movie that I'm like convinced that you'll hate for sure. And then you like it. <laughs> well, it's not. So Pitch Perfect 1 and 2, they're not like great movies. They're not like super well done. They're just fun to watch. Like they're right. enjoyable. The music's good. Like, And you, you think the third one even looks. The third one to me looks not even remotely good. It's like way overplayed. Yeah, probably. I haven't seen it. I heard it's awful. Oh, I've, but, just uh, from the previews. Yeah. I'm sure I'll see it at some point, but the previews, I wasn't too thrilled with number two. I honestly don't know if I even have seen a trailer. Um, I've seen a, a little, like, a teaser. Basically, they go on, like, a USO tour or something like that to the troops. Yeah. or Because so, they can't I conceivably be in college anymore. I don't know. I don't know. Something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't like. I assume it's bad, especially based on everything I've heard about it. Um, yeah. But when I heard it was coming out, I was like, "Oh, it'll be fun." Like, it's like uh, it's just one of those things, you know. I, I I'm getting to the point where I don't want to see any more movies with Rebel Wilson. Yeah, she. Uh, She's. Well, she's. She, I used to think she was really funny, um, and then she's just not. She's like a, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Well, it's. Well, it's not that hard, but it's, <laughs> the she's just not that funny. She relies too much on physical comedy yeah. and just being a big person. Yeah, which is fine. Like that's what she's about, but. It only will take you so far because then you end up being the same character in every movie that you're in. Yeah. The same with uh, Melissa McCartney. Uh, Melissa McCarthy. I was going to say she's the new Melissa McCarthy because I used to think she was really funny and now I uh, I can't I can't stand her. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to, uh, I think, for physical comedians to be consistently funny. Yeah, they they have shorter careers well it depends on who it is but well not shorter careers just shorter um periods of time where they're enjoyable yes and i think it's similar it's a weird comparison but it's similar to like youtube Chris Farley. Oh, okay <laughs> uh youtube stars that, that went a different direction <laughs> yeah um but what happens is you have these really really popular people who have like 10 million subscribers or whatever that just right. make trash that make stuff that isn't fun or you know entertaining or interesting yeah but they appeal to you know 10 11 12 year olds and mm. yes there are always more of them so as you're losing fans you're gaining fans like it's just this these kids will right. wa- watch it a- they don't age with you yeah. they stay in that small demographic and you age out of it Yes. Uh, there's there's one that my son watches on YouTube. It's it's a Minecraft channel 
Oh my gosh, this dude! It's 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 a man and a and a woman. Yeah. I don't know if they're like a couple or what. I just hear them all the time. They drive me nuts <laughs> because they play like they've never played Minecraft before, and they're like they're discovering things. Mm-hmm. But they have so many videos, and it actually it the way I I watched a little bit of it, and it almost seems like they play for like hours, and then they go back and they record their voices on it, and it's almost like a reaction video, and it's so awful. Oh my gosh, it's so bad. My son watches it all the time. <laughs> kids have terrible taste they do and I, I i was just saying i'm like this is how our parents probably felt watching things that we liked as kids pokemon Ex- exactly that's like, the real reason why your mom didn't let you watch pokemon because it was just stupid yeah it's just really boring <laughs> to her yeah I, I still love it i don't care um so on patreon we are currently still tied Thirty three, thirty three. So at the end of this month, whoever is losing the Patreon is going to have to do the Bean Loose. Boozle Challenge. We're going to live stream it on Facebook. Uh, people will have an opportunity to ask us trivia questions. If we get the question right, we're able to get rid of that jelly bean that we picked. If we get it wrong, we have to eat it. So you have a 50-50 shot of having a good jelly bean or a bad jelly bean. But yeah, we're going to go. We still haven't decided how many questions I think we'll just let no. it go on the day. Um yeah. and see see what makes The other the one sense. is do we have to eat and swallow the whole thing? I think that makes the most sense, right? Okay. I I would say so, but I I when I see videos of people do it, they just like spit it out right away. Chew it, get a little bit and spit it and that's supposedly acceptable and that's not acceptable to me. <laughs> you, you just gotta, If you're going to do it, you just got to do it. You're just saying that because you think I'm going to lose. No, I'm just saying for the enjoyment factor, even if it's me, it's got to don't you make it funny or it's not even worth putting yourself through that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can go over to patreon.com slash I seen that and help us out. 